Hello YouTube. Here we are. We're back as I promised. We've got a few things we're going to show you that we've reviewed over time. Uh, this is Nick. I'm Eric. We're father and son. And uh, we're going to bring you gear reviews. We're going to start out with stuff that a hundred bucks or under. And then gradually we'll move up. And we'll do some shooting, we'll test some ammo, um, get some friends involved to go out with us and their kids. Um, so, let's go over some of the things we got. We've been out here already 24, a little over 24 hours. Um, we got out here late yesterday. So... We'll show you some things we got and brought with us. Some of the stuff we've been testing. First off, this SOL Bivy. We tested this about a month ago. Um, we got we picked up some 40 degree bags, real compact that we could fit in our backpacks for when we go scouting. But for deer or Elk, if we ever get drawn, hasn't happened yet. Or uh, just camping reasons, and we want to take less things with us. As you can tell, we've used it because it takes up the whole bag. When you first get them, they're about this big. Uh, I'm not going to give you any specs. What I'll tell you is it costs about 17 bucks. I don't know what we pay for these on Amazon. 15? Yeah, 15. 15, 16 bucks on Amazon. You see, it's like a sleeping bag. One thing we found condensation builds up. They work really well, they keep you warm. <clears throat> but the condensation is a problem. Uh, when we went out, temperatures ended up being colder than what we thought last month and they got in temperatures got into the 30s and we had some winds I think we had 10 15 mile an hour winds we were in a canyon it was swirling we had our big eight-man tent and we didn't put our rain fly on it because we didn't expect any rain and it got cold these saved our butts till about four o'clock in the morning and our sleeping bags got damp so it was pile out start a fire get in the pickup crank the heat on take a two-hour nap <laughs> but anyway we always bring this hatchet with us we've had this hatchet since Nick was Oh, he was about three, no, he was about four or five, I think. Well, he was about four, because my youngest daughter was a, still in diapers when we got this and took a three-day camping trip. So this has been with our family for a while. We don't use it a whole lot. We've got another one that we brought with us that we use around the house for splitting wood because we have a uh, smoker grill. And that thing gets used a lot. So the fiberglass handled one gets used a lot and it's pretty much mushroomed on the back here because we use a hammer and we use it for splitting wood. But anyway, this goes with us everywhere. And it works pretty good, but it's getting loose it's time to update it and uh, test some new stuff. Wet fire. As I said before, Thursday it is Sunday, December 7th, 2014. Uh, Thursday, this past Thursday, it rained.
rained all day and up here through the Friday it rained off and on and Saturday was cloud, uh, cloudy all day yesterday and uh, about what you say about seven or eight o'clock it started to rain on us and we had yeah. to do some quick thinking on the shelter because it started coming in through the top. The reason why I have a big opening on the top is my son has asthma and we wanted to test this chimney theory and uh, it works and we just this old plastic here we had laying around we wanted to test this uh, I don't know to see if it'd be better than a tent because it seems like every time we use a tent we freeze our butts off so the wet fire everything was wet this stuff performs phenomenally Sorry we didn't get any of it on video. Maybe we'll get it on a video at another time, hopefully. And maybe it'll be when we get our better equipment. Can't tell you when that's going to happen. These knives here, this little knife, This knife here, we got these from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They're stainless steel. I'm not real big on specs, but I will tell you, this one is about oh, a quarter inch thick, and this one is about an eighth inch thick. The handles are wood. They're full tang. We used them around the house quite a bit. My wife, my daughter. My wife wants these knives for her kitchen. So I'm going to have to buy some new ones to throw on my truck because I like them too. And uh, buy an extra pack. Uh, maybe we'll just use them as gifts. But the kicker to this is thank you, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, 25 bucks for these two knives delivered. That's shipping and handling together. Can't tell you, I can't remember the price of them. I think this was six. I think this might have been eight, seven or eight. 25 bucks for two knives. Stainless steel. They're made in Pakistan. Now, I got another Pakistan knife I'm going to show you. It costs more than both these knives. Minus the shipping. Uh, stainless steel knife. Uh, I don't know what this stuff is here. Some funky crap. Be a good knife for a kid, but the handles are kind of thin. This one's a little, you know, it's small. Great for kitchen work. And this would be great for skinning and gunning so with this one it's, they're not too big and I imagine you could probably get away with doing some bushcraft I don't know about batoning because I can't remember how long the blade is <laughs> and they come with these real nice nice uh, leather sheaths with some fancy stuff on here I don't like probably cut that stuff off later but I guess I'll give those to my wife because I told her I was keeping them. <laughs> and that might be part of her Christmas present. This knife is uh, doesn't get used all that often because I've had it a long time and it's just strictly a fighting knife. I got this at a uh, uh, military surplus store. I think I paid 40 bucks for it. Uh, this is before Nick was born. So he's 19. So I've had this probably 20 some years. Um, Columbia River Knife Tool. I don't think they make it anymore. It is full tang.
but it it goes with me just about everywhere I want to go if I remember to take it with me it's super sharp it's got a serrated edge top for cutting rope uh, it's a good knife like I said it's strictly this is for fighting this would be a military knife a backup knife to your bayonet but I don't think they make it anymore it's nice solid sheath and I just thought I'd throw that in there this is something we can always carry with us even when we go scout we don't carry it. something I was really surprised we got real stupid one day bought some knives off the TV off of one of them knife shopping deals and we got this here I'm really surprised at it it's a frost cutlery knife full tang I can't remember if they call it the airborne knife or the ranger knife or whatever it is but it's about a quarter inch thick and I would say it's probably a seven or eight inch long blade maybe 10 inches overall it's pretty heavy we're gonna start using this and see let you guys know if it's good for bushcraft we used it when we went out in November chop up some meat and stuff but we found some fat wood and we'll see if we can do some uh, feather boards with it I definitely think you can baton with it it's big enough it's kind of narrow up here well we'll see got a kind of a cheap nylon sheath but it's not too big and the snap is positive uh, that'll fit my belt well and this is a little kit we've got just some stuff thrown together extra ziploc bag uh, some zip ties if you're in an emergency situation, you want something to show this, there's an emergency deal in here. Um, a poncho, um, a water container. We are, oh, there's it. There we go. And I don't even remember where we got all this stuff, but. Let's, let's see. Huh. Emergency poncho. Looks pretty thin, but it might save your butt and keep you from getting hypothermia. Hypothermia. Just in case. Emergency water bag. Now, we've had this thing for a while, so I don't know. I can't remember if we... Where, what we got this water be. Hold on, I'm old. I gotta have my cheaters. Oh, talents. I don't know, I think somebody might have put this together and it might have been in something that we bought. Not knowing they gave us their survival kit. And we got a box of 22s. We actually have two of these in here. Well, you try to take a 22 with us at all times. And I threw this little old cheap lock back in here. It's right edge. I guess it's not very cheap. I don't even know where I got it. It's a lock plate. But it'll skin. It'll skin and gut a deer or anything else. 
that's pretty much all we care about. That's a little stiff. I don't think I've ever used it. Here's this other Pakistan knife. I got this at a smoke shop. For 12 bucks. It is full tang. It's about a quarter inch thick, maybe thicker. It's made from a file. Here, Nick, you want to grab it? Show it. Take it up there a little closer. Got that for 12 bucks. That's a good skinning knife right there. And it came with a leather sheath. They could have did a better job with the sheath because it really doesn't hold it in there tight. So I'm going to have to make some modifications to that. Another Ziploc and a little first aid kit. Let's see what's in here. I guess this is something you can throw in a backpack. I'll do all this whole thing. Uh, or your cargo pocket. But the thing I don't like, there's no filtration straw in there. Okay, we've got some little band aids. Band aids. Oh, this was in here. I guess you should have looked at this. Long time ago. I don't know what that is. Gauze, gauze, more band aids. Made in Canada. Must be an antiseptic wipe. Uh, looks like some sterile gloves or some vinyl gloves or latex gloves. Rayon balls. Okay. It's good to know. I use that to start a fire alarm. Well, that's a kit that we have, a first aid kit. We carry a bigger kit. Uh, Nick, do you want to go grab that? We'll just, it's just something we bought at Walmart. We usually carry one. It's, uh, I think it's Johnson & Johnson. You get it over where the first aid stuff is, pharmacy. This is our first day kit, you know. We can go to any Walmart, pick one up. Uh, we've gone through about four of these in the last 19 years, 20 years. Um, we like them. They're cheaper than the ones you buy at the sporting department at Walmart. One thing we did add. I died. Let it die. Well, whatever it is. Use that to treat water. Um, you know, it's got some neosporin. It's got Motrin. Not 
What I would really like to get my hands on is one of them adventure medical kits. Compare them to one of these. Maybe we'll do that later on. Like I said, I'm trying to do this and show people this is stuff you can keep in your vehicle at all times. Because you may have an emergency, you may break down somewhere, and always, always carry water. We didn't get one because we have a Rubbermaid five gallon jug that we take with us anytime we go anywhere. Arizona is dangerous without water. She will kick your butt. Doesn't matter if it's in the wintertime, summertime, summertime's worse. But even in the wintertime, always water, water, water. <sighs> Crap. Yeah, I bet some people I know are going to laugh at that. Look at Eric. He can't put that crap back together. Stay. So this is what we carry. And I think I paid 10 bucks for this. Not bad. I think that iodine was six. Here's something else we've been testing. Stanley. Oh, our tea waters. Some of our tea waters. Done. Well, I'll tell you what. We've done some tomatoes and rice. And chicken and tomatoes and rice. Habanero tomatoes. We've been using it to brew up water for our tea. At least uh, this last last night, today, and this thing rocks. Some comes with these two nesting cups, and uh, the rice that we use takes about an hour to cook because it's gluten free. I'm a I have a I uh, have a gluten allergy and it's pretty severe. Because it took 12 years to figure it out what it was but anyway it's got markings on it uh, how much water 20 ounces of water but I bet you could put if you filled it all the way up you'd have probably close to 24 ounces of water and it's got a little lid with holes in it so steam but we cooked that rice that chicken in there and it fills this thing up uh, and, and we can each one of us get about four servings four of these bowls worth before we kill that so that's a pretty good amount of food um, you have because I don't measure I, I never Ever measure. So I, I, it's a lot of guesswork on my part. I just add a little bit of rice or too much rice and not enough water or water as I'm cooking at it. So sometimes it takes longer. But uh, this is awesome. They fit in the backpack. Uh, you know, if you're traveling, there's all kind of duffel bags out there. I have my old military duffel bag. We filled all of our crap up in it. We wanted to show you everything we got in there so that you, know, so that you can see how much stuff we could get in. But, you know, we're just learning. And uh, I work seven days in a row before I get days off. So I don't remember a whole lot. And, uh, I forget to write stuff down for Nick to take care of him. So we fly by the seat of our pants most of the time. Unless it's a, we get drawn for deer or something like that. Then we're preparing months in advance. <laughs> anyway, that's a little, uh, you know, we're not professional survivalists. We're not professional bushcrafters. Uh, all we are is a couple of uh, 
Arizona guys that like the outdoors and we're looking for some new equipment and everything we looked up people were doing it in their backyards and uh, I find it hard to spend my hard earned money on something I don't know actually works so the better you know when we update our equipment we get better equipment uh, more organized and better at this video stuff will show you us actually using all this stuff this stuff this is going in my work bag uh, let me get my work bag and I'll show you just some of the things I got in there that is going in my work bag I'm a miner and I work in an old big old open pit mine. I uh, have encountered snow because I got to cross two mountain passes to get to work. So I do carry some things and this a couple of these little cubes are going in there this is going in there i have a poncho a hooded poncho survival emergency blanket my toilet paper I don't have this thing filled to capacity either because sometimes climbing up and down on equipment. This is my little bit driver set for my uh, Gerber multi tool. I got some extra ear plugs in there and a sweatband for my hard hat. But that stuff is gold right there. Good old moon fly. Never leave home without it. Matter of fact, we keep two or three rolls in the truck. This is usually. I keep my lockout tag out. I do carry a little sharpening stone from SOG. It's a little diamond dill, ceramic. A flint striker. Never, I don't think I've ever used that. But I lost the knife. And it really ticked me off. I was eating lunch and I was cutting some meat. And uh, I left it in a shovel. And somebody got themselves a nice block back saw knife. Real heavy duty. Really liked it. But, oh, that's in the other pocket. I usually carry a couple of knives. Carry this cold steel. A neighbor gave it to me. I really like it. I like the handle. Uh, as a matter of fact, I used, we used to cut some of this up. This knife kicks butt. Cold steel, you rock. That's a, it's just looks like an old butt, just with a rubberized handle. Lock back. A little bit of jimping. It's got a positive lock as you heard it. I hope you heard it click. It says it's made in Japan. But you know what? I don't even know how much that costs. I'll have to look it up. Pretty nice little lock back though. And I started carrying this because somebody hit a deer at work and uh, they called out over the radio and I claimed it. I jumped on that. It was a nice little doe. 
she tastes good. But they called the sheriff, they did everything, and I got paperwork for it. And, and so we stopped after work and claimed her. And I had to use this to skin her. It was a little Gerber Tanto. Don't know what it is. They both of them. That Gerber has skinned the deer and gutted. It's not the best thing, but it got the job done. But it kicked my butt. I usually may, I mainly use that for cutting rope at work. In this other pouch here, I usually carry two squirt bottles or squeeze bottles, sports bottles of water, uh, which we're using right now. Um, my nasal spray, my ibuprofen, some pins, and uh, all over this bag, we get these hydration packets. Squincher. Nick, you want to show that? I don't know where you get them. It's an electrolyte replacement. They're freaking awesome. Uh, <clears throat> and I carry batteries in here. And I carry this little thing here. I don't know where I got it. But it holds my Blistex. Band-Aids, and, it, and it, you know, it keeps stuff kind of dry. I don't know if it's waterproof. It doesn't look like it, but it'll keep it somewhat dry. I am not, I don't plan on dropping this in a lake or a pond. But, this is big enough that I could put, roll this sweater that I got here, this fleece, up, and I could shove it down in here I got some molly on here this I believe this came from sportsman's guy I got this from a guy at work for 26 bucks uh, got earplugs safety glasses got some string uh, I always carry paracord I got paracord I got an extra lock a gun lock and a I use them on my locker. Tin foil. I'll have to put that up here. Uh, cheaters. Uh, lockout tags for uh, BO equipment. Reading material. Redhead. And I usually have a couple gun magazines in here too, but I have American Survival Buyer's Guide. That's some pretty good stuff, so if you have an opportunity, pick it up. It's expensive stuff. And I'm uh, I'm a bit of a tight one, so I try and go cheap. I have I still raise the kids kids aren't cheap I don't think they ever were I don't think I was but they're definitely not as cheap as when I was a kid well anyway that's some of the stuff I, I got I'll let Nick show you some of the stuff he's got that he carries your knife 
uh, whatever else. This is all I got. Okay, I show carry, up your All I carry is a CRKT lockback. Really good knife. <clears throat> I like it. Got it at a gun store. gun store where we live. That's all I carry on a daily basis. <clears throat> well, one thing we did try while we were out here is backpacker's pantry. And we tried it because I think it had a big I think it says it's gluten free it is yeah that's why I tried it because it is gluten free some of them just say gluten free on the outside of them some of them don't yes. gluten free you gotta read the ingredients but huevos rancheros and Colorado omelet they taste pretty good they take too long to cook from my opinion and, uh, if you don't put any lard in there it won't fluff up this is the kind of stuff I take I bought a big number 10 can of powdered eggs I throw some in there We mix it up. We carry lard with us. Lard is easily packable. You throw some lard in. We bought this aluminum pot for five bucks at a thrift store. And it works great. It does everything we want it to. You throw some lard in there. Mix that up. Throw some ham. Uh, I don't think I'll show that. Because that don't look too good. But anyway, we threw some DAC ham. And when you throw the lard in there and you mix it up and cook it, these actually turn out looking like scrambled eggs. The other stuff kind of look like soup. Can check in. He brings uh, ramen noodles. I'll show you the rice that I can bring. This is the rice. It's gluten free, it says gluten free. Whole grain, wild blend. Nick said it smelled like bird food the first time we tried it. But this is awesome, awesome rice. Um, if you ever have a chance, even if you're not on a gluten free diet, try this. Uh, this is, uh, we found this a few months ago. You throw a burger in there, we've thrown burger in with this stuff, chicken, and uh, just diced tomato. Um, it's really great. Alrighty. So, that's, uh, that's it, I guess. Whoa have to sign off and uh, we got to finish getting ready for tonight because it was oh I'd say in the low 20s when we got up this morning and it's uh, been a clear sky pretty much all day it's some high clouds but uh, we want to get prepared one thing we did bring uh, 
we want to, uh, we did bring uh, Thermarest. We picked those up at Amazon for 18 bucks. 15 each. 15 each. Uh, we did, the way we did our floor is, uh, uh, our sleep area is, uh, put some of this plastic that we cut off that was the excess down as a, a moisture barrier then we put a tarp down uh, and then we had a piece of cardboard we put down just under our torso area and then our thermo rest and then our 40 degree bags and I did bring which my wife wasn't happy because she likes using it as a comforter during the winter time is my sportsman's guide uh, minus 30 degree bag. Great big huge bag. When you open it up, it'll cover a queen size bed, no problem. It covered us. And since we had that, that's why we didn't use these. Because that thing is way more comfortable and way more room. Warmer. And we don't have to worry about condensation. So uh, uh the the thing that we uh we were impressed about this is the, you know, it's got holes in there, <laughs> uh, and it's not uh, pretty. It it kept more wind off of us than a regular tent. And the the little fireplace we built, I'll have Nick go in and uh, do a get you uh, some better pictures of it. I've seen this on YouTube, Bushcraft Park. They built this little fireplace, and I'm pretty impressed with this. And, uh, I think next time I'll, I'm going to do a little investigating and see if I can't get me a wood stove. That way I can stay warmer. All right, go ahead and show that. <coughs> Shut the audio off. Yeah, oh, and this. There he is, he's going inside the shelter. So I'll show you uh, there's, there's quite a bit of gear in there. Show you our sleep area. As you can see our uh, thermal blanket <laughs> that we put up for to reflect the heat on us kind of fell down, so we're gonna have to redo that tonight before it gets dark. But that's our little uh, our little fireplace. And we're gonna leave this up so if we come back to this area we can find it again. Gonna show you the outside. Uh, like I said it rained a lot up here so we had a lot of wet ground. There's a lot of clay up here. We just packed it around the outside of it stacked a bunch of rocks and it worked like a charm. Oh maybe you know what Nick we'll we'll, we'll be turning the sound off because uh, we're hooked up to our laptop right now. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and fire it up. We got some old man's beard and we got some fat wood. We'll go ahead and throw it in there so you can see it uh, see how it works. Alright I'm gonna shut the sound down. We apologize for not the sound, but uh, like I said, we're uh, limited budget, but we already know we need.